So my name is Justin Seal. I'm the Assistant Registrar of the University of the West Indies. And I am right now speaking to you from Suzhou, China. But today I will represent the entire university system. We are not just one university. Um, we're an entire system that spans across um, five campuses across the English speaking Caribbean. Um, so just to get started a bit on my presentation, just gonna share my screen again, give me a second. All right, so first let's talk about YUE, all right. So YUE, first of all, we're inclusive, all right. At UE, we believe in student-centered learning and student-centered education. And to this extent, we've also expanded our, our what we recognize in terms of for matriculation for our students. So we now accept the Galco examination score as a part of your holistic application. Now, please be also aware that Yes, you may have high scores for your university, your, your high school education if you're going into a bachelor's degree, or for your university education if you're going into a postgraduate study. But we look more at your holistic performance. And for persons who are coming from um, countries that are not signatories of the Washington Accord, um, we can accept your WES report, especially if you're coming from a country where English was not the, the primary language of delivery for your studies. In addition, um, we can off, offer English speaking um, or rather English programs before you begin your studies to help you along the way to make you ready if your English proficiency is not up to standard according to what we think you need to succeed in your courses. So furthermore, why you, we, we provide a path to a degree for our Chinese students. Um, so we know that for in China, the Gaokao examination um, is kind of like a, it offers a cutoff point where if you score, you may score below that on that particular day, you may not be able to matriculate into a university in China. Um, we will also consider that score even if it is below the national average. So we do not have a cutoff Gaokao grade to prohibit enrollment into the UWA in the Caribbean. All right, and again, if you need, we can provide remedial English language um, courses before you begin your degree. All right, I'm moving on. Your UE degree will also be accredited in several countries in the world, including the US, Canada, and, and the UK. Furthermore, the university benefits from the university benefits from partnerships with more than 50 universities. Uh, in 14 countries worldwide. So if you don't want to stay in the Caribbean after you study, whether you don't want to start a business or if you don't want to stay there and work, that's no problem. You can benefit from all the partnerships we have. In the US, we're partnering with universities like the SUNY University, where we have an institute of leadership. In Canada, we're partnering with the University of Alberta, um, Waterloo, York, and McMaster. Um, at this point, we even have some university students in the Faculty of Computer Science who are about to spend a semester abroad in Canada. We also partner with the Birmingham University, University of Birmingham rather, King's College and the University of the Kingston University in London. We have other partner universities in other countries as well. So if you'd like to and you have any questions on this, please feel free to send me an email after this presentation. And I will definitely share it with my colleagues who have purview over the other partner, um, the other partnerships rather in other countries. They can, they can give you specific information on how you can apply and what programs they have on offer. All right, so today I'm gonna to speak to you a little bit more about one, one campus in particular. So first, let's give you some background information. This is the Caribbean. Um, historically, it has been known as the, the West Indies. Um, the two mean the same thing. So if you see the Caribbean anywhere and you see the West Indies the same way, please do not think that the West Indies is in India. It is in the Caribbean, or rather it is the Caribbean. All right, so this is a map of our campuses. We have campuses in Barbados, Cape Hill. We have campuses in Mona, Jamaica. We have campuses in Trinidad and Tobago. We have campuses, a campus rather, in Antigua and Barbuda. That's the Five Islands campus. All right. Today, we're going to talk more about our campus in Barbados, the Cave Hill campus. All right. So Barbados, first of all, is a former uh, British colony. It's a member of the Commonwealth. Um, that means that English is the 
main language, or rather the standard language of speaking, we have a dialect, which is almost like a derivative, or rather it is a derivative from English, mixed in with other um, local words, but English is the language of business, it's the language of commerce, it's the language of, of everything else. Population-wise, the demographics are here. You can see uh, we are majority Black and majority Christian, although Barbanians are a very, very strange people in that the culture recognizes and accepts everyone while um, having individual preferences. Um, so there's no, there's, there's very little discrimination um, to cause you to, to feel ostracized or deny you any services that you need by the state or by anywhere else. All right, so let's talk a bit about more about Barbadian people. Barbadian people are confident and we know the world's most famous Barbadian is Rihanna. Um, we know that they are easygoing. Um, we do like to relax when it's time to relax, but when it's time to work, we also like to work very, very hard. Um, we like to play hard, work hard, play hard, because at the end of the day in Barbados, most people believe that um, there's a, a benefit to life, there's a value to life, and in the same breath, studying is an investment into a quality of life that you'd like to improve for yourself. So there's a balance, a happy balance that we like to strike in our lives in Barbados. We achieved all this mainly through education. The, the island was developed um, through social policies that made education attainable for most of the population post-colonial times or post-independence, which meant that it gave the opportunity to every individual in the country to have upward social mobility through becoming um, or rather uh, actualizing their potential in studying, um, going abroad to study, becoming a doctor if that's what you'd like to do, or providing you with the technical skills as skills training to launch your own um, service-based um, business. Um, it could be in hospitality, it could be in um, a technical field, maybe a mechanic, etc. So now we have a special partnership with China um, whereby we've created the Institute of Software Engineering, rather the China Institute of Information Technology is a signatory between the University of the West Indies and the Global Institute of Software Technology here in Suzhou. Suzhou is a large city to the west of Shanghai. I was just advised that we were updated to a tier one city now um, with the expansion of um, city tiers in China. And it has the fourth largest economy, I think, I'm sorry, the sixth largest economy in China um, based on cities. Um, and just was formed with a joint venture with Microsoft and the Suzhou Science and Technology Town, which is the government for this new district, which is a, a new part of Suzhou that has been created specifically to help uh, incubate technology companies, um, research and development and educational, uh, educational um, partnerships. So Suzhou is great. We chose Suzhou because it blends the both, best of both worlds. It blends a little bit of the old world with the old town and traditional respectful um, Chinese culture. You can see it in the iconography and, and the silent dignity of the Chinese people here in Suzhou. But at the same time, it faces the world boldly. Um, and that's represented in the architecture again. Um, on the right, you have the, the Dongfang Man, which is the gate to the east. And it's the, the, the landmark building, one of the landmark buildings rather are in Suzhou. All right, here you go. That's the economy of Suzhou again. So why are we here in Suzhou with this project, with this partnership? Um, Suzhou has many developing industries um, with its situation or uh, quite close to Shanghai. There are many engineering companies, um, international companies are, are situated here and established here. Uh, Bosch has an office here, Microsoft has an office here. I think AMD at one point had an office here. Um, Samsung also had one, but I think they're gone as well. But the, the whole idea is that we have the students graduating with two years of technical experience or theoretical experience that you will get in the Caribbean. And then the final two years, which is mainly practical experience. So after you graduate from a, uh, this program um, with a degree in software engineering, a bachelor's degree, the idea is that you will have a blend of both worlds. Um, you can be a software engineer, you'll have all the skills to succeed and be proficient, um, but also you will have the theory so that in the future you'd like to build upon that and pursue postgraduate study or even have a degree as well as your skills, then that's what this program offers for you. 
All right, as we said, the first two years are at the Cato campus in Barbados, and the final two years are at the Global Institute of Software Technology here in Sucho. All right, here is a brief outline of our program. The first two years at Cave Hill are all basically theoretical and introductory. Um, you will need to definitely know your math for this uh, program, because uh, not only because math is important for everything in life, but because your logical thinking and critical thinking skills will, will be employed in terms of creating algorithmic solutions for problems. Uh, moreover, the final two years are all, well, majority hands-on. So you'll be expected to build apps and you will have various milestones along the process. So it's very easy to find yourself creating an entire project over the, the, the course of a semester um, with milestones along the way where you'll be graded. Here are some of our students touring NEO's testing center in Anting in Shanghai, where we were able to, well, it was, it was a great experience because we were able to see um, behind closed doors how they, make sure that their all their vehicles meet the quality standards to get on the road to be roadworthy, but also to deliver what is promised to customers in NEO's brand. Here is our students again. Uh, here are our students rather as a tour of China Telecom and China Mobile in Suzhou, China. Um, the one on the left is at their information center and the one on the right is at a data center over here in Suzhou. And then of course, we have the informal curriculum. Our students enjoy the life, life in China. They enjoy living in a safe environment, uh, both in Barbados and in Suzhou. And they enjoy picking up valuable skills like learning Mandarin and also learning from the comparison of two different cultures. Um, they get a more global view of how the world works. And again, our students enjoy, enjoy their lives. Um, on the right, we've had a, a dumpling making session for Chinese New Year. Um, on the left, we had a Barbados Independence Gala in Shanghai, where our students uh, went over to join the ambassador and some visiting ministers. Um, and then we have our students just having fun in the office between classes. In addition, our students take part in many extra extracurricular activities. They join sports, they form meaningful friendships, and they're invited to weddings of some of the staff on campus. And on the bottom right, um, they've also earned some scholarships and that's them, of course, being very joyful about that. And they take part in the sports as well, not only on campus, but for the entire district. As a matter of fact, our student in the top right-hand corner, Nimoy, um, rather Nemo Smith, um, he was able to secure an internship with the company that sponsored their football team. So what can you earn in this program? You earn a Bachelor of Science in Software Engineering. You can earn an IT certificate, um, um, which is important for your industry. So this is an opportunity for you if whatever is based or, or, or is in our program design, um, maybe we don't have something that you would like to pursue, maybe like game design or another specific area like that, you can use your IT certification then to complement and augment your skills that you will get in the degree. In addition, you'll get a certificate of graduation, graduation from GIST, which identifies that you have and verifies you've actually had time to study in China. We also encourage you to take the HSK exam, but that's not mandatory. You will have a three month internship in China as well, in Suzhou, and you'll definitely have Mandarin skills by the time you graduate. So coming out of this program, it will be almost impossible for you not to be employed. All right, here are the entry requirements. We need a minimum of five CSEC or CXC. These are the equivalent to GCSEs in Barbados. Um, and we need grades A to C, and we need to have some science courses in there in addition to math and English. Um, for Cape, we also need the same thing, which is the equivalent to A-levels in the Caribbean. We need uh, grade, grades at one or two or better, um, or rather around one or two. And we need to have uh, either a degree in uh, focus on computer science, or we need to have uh, math as one of the, the, the sciences or the, the, the courses of study that you've had. All right, here are the fees. If for international students, their fees are 10,000 US every year. That's the tuition fee. Um, for Caribbean students, the fee is 7,000 US every year. And here are some affiliated uh, living expenses that you'll incur while you're at the Cayfield campus. All right, so to apply, you can go to uwi.edu. At this point in time, I think I think our application season has closed. 
um, for 2022, September 2022. However, if you'd still like to apply, please send me an email after um, and we can follow up on that to give you specifics. But you can still go ahead and apply if you'd like to enroll in 2023 or September 2023. For more information, please email me, um, registrar seal, justin.seal at kfl.uwa.edu. Or you can also email Pat Adderley. She's the head of the Student Enrollment and Retention Unit at patricia.adderley at kfl.ue.edu. Um, please, if you're going to email me, you can, rather, if you're going to email Pat, you can also copy me as well. All right. So this is the University of the West Indies. Now we open the floor to questions. Hi, thanks, Justin, for the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. So let's check if there are some uh, questions from the students. So there is uh, one question about the entry requirement because it's mentioned there, it's mostly for the GCE uh, curriculum, but the question here is, is there any minimum entry requirement for the IB students? No, um, we look at all applications holistically. So whatever you've had, um, whatever you've got, you've earned from your high school level, please just send it to us. And we can definitely guide you through that process. Um, if you, the, the main thing I think would be your English proficiency for sure. Um, that will be key. If you do not have that, we can also arrange a, a, maybe a prelim course or a prelim year if, if you do need to come up to speed a little bit more and more intensely, more intensely rather. Um, and also for software engineering specifically, I would admonish anyone applying to make sure that you have math at a very good grade because math is core to the department and core to enrollment into this specific um, degree. Um, and uh, along with math, you need another science subject as well. So it could be physics, it could be biology, it could be chemistry, um, but definitely you need math and you'll, you'll need English. Okay, so mathematics, English, and one other science subject must be there in their yes. high school transcripts. Yes. Got it. So uh, question, another question here is, is this program open for all nationality? I mean, for all international students, regardless of their nationality, right? Absolutely, absolutely. It's open to the entire world. Um, we started this program in 2016. Um, so we got our first students in China in 2018, and we were very happy about that. Um, but then the pandemic slowed everything down a bit. Um, so now we're renewing our focus on mm -hmm. attracting students from all over the world. Mm -hmm. Got it. So we had a question here from Ian. Uh, thank you for the presentation. You mentioned a three months internship offered by the program. So what kind of internship and what kind of companies are involved here? Okay, so over here in Sujo, we have, oh, there's so many companies that are here already. One of our students did an internship with Bosch here in Sujo. Um, so you can have large companies with big brand names, but we also have companies that are smaller. Um, so we've got an internship partner, his name is John, and he started his own company here and he took on our interns. And I've, I've been very pleased in, in, in following up with him and, and the interns to see their progress. There, is, there are some benefits of going to a larger company for an internship um, because you have a, a recognized name on your resume. Um, but then there are also benefits to going to a smaller company. You have more mentorship. You have more direct contact with leadership and technical advisors. Um, so it really depends. We are also open to students proposing which companies they would like to intern with, with us here in Sujo. We would review that just to make sure that it's compliant because we don't want any of our students to go anywhere to be to not be safe. Mm -hmm. So to which extent uh, will the university help the students to find the internship? Will they have to find the internship by themselves or will they have uh, will they get any assistance from the university? Oh, we definitely do. Um, our partner GIST, we partner with them because they're extraordinarily great in this area. GIST is partnered with more than 300 different um, companies here in Sujo. So they can definitely match you with a company. And if you would tell us what your preferences are or what your career um, interests are, we can definitely match you with a company. But apart from that, if you've identified a company that you think works better for you, and it may not be a company with which we've already partnered, you can bring it to us. Um, but mm -hmm. please do that before the internship semester. The internship semester is the final semester. So you could probably do that in the beginning of your final year, the first semester, 
bring the company to us so that we can do the due diligence. We need to make sure that they're a legitimate company, they're registered in China, et cetera, um, just to make sure that you're safe there. In addition, your internship will add will be added to your visa as an annotation. So that, that information will definitely go to the entry exit bureau and so on. So all that compliance stuff needs to be done. Um, so yeah, if you find a company that you would prefer, which may not be one that we can we are already partnered with, we can definitely work with that. Mm -hmm. Got it. So I think one final question here, Justin, it's about the application uh, to the program itself. So is there any other documents that you uh, that students need to prepare beforehand? And is there any application fee that they have to pay to apply for this program? I cannot remember the application fee off, off the top of my head right now because within our university, different departments have different fees. Yeah. Does it make sense? Um, but I know you can definitely go to the website and you can click on apply now and follow the prompts for this specific um, program. Um, in addition, if there's anyone else with more specific questions, please, please, please email me. Um, I check my email every day, um, even though, even when I'm on leave, I check my email every day. So go ahead and send me an email and I can get back to you. If I don't know, I can send it to the correct department that they can definitely get back to you. 